Hi everyone, it's Suzanne here. Welcome to another Monday Makes project. Before I start uh, working, I'd like to take a minute to share with you the new product release catalog from Stampin' Up. This occasion's catalog is jam-packed with some super fun stamps and papers and kits and items and crafty things. What's really awesome about this catalog is it comes with a little free stuff catalog. The smaller one there. Oh, and isn't that the cute? I'm using that stamp today for a card. All right, so uh, what this means is for every $60 you spend, you will earn one free item from this smaller catalog. And the reason why I'm pointing this out today is because today's project is using blendability markers. And one of the free items that you can choose from the celebration catalog is these markers. Also, Stampin' Up! has released four new color families in the occasions catalog. So it's pretty, it's pretty exciting if you like coloring. And I really do. These alcohol markers are so cool. And you'll see later on in, in the video. I'm going to be showing, sharing a few um, tips and tricks today about using the blendabilities. So you can see those are softer colors right now. Bermuda Bay, Pink Pirouette, Soft Sky, Wild Wasabi. So excited. If you don't have your catalog, get a hold of me and I'll send you up one. Okay, so first things first, I have to use Memento ink. It is an alcohol marker safe ink. So that means when I go over top with the alcohol markers, they won't, it, the line won't smudge or smear. It gives a great impression using the photopolymer stamps, these little clear ones that I'm using. So this is a water-based ink and just to note, any alcohol or oil-based ink will probably smear when you're using alcohol markers. Some inks, uh, classic ink pads from Stampin' Up! are also blendability marker friendly, and I'll list them in my blog for you. So my technique in using the blendabilities is I do a light wash to saturate the paper, and then I go in with the darkest marker and create the shadow. Then I use the medium marker to blend the dark, and then I use the light one to finish. And sometimes I'll go back a few times to get the color I want. Going over the color will not muddy or deepen the color at all. It just blends it better. Now some people like to go from dark to light. You need to find a style that suits you. Maybe you start with medium and put the dark shadows in or and the light. It's up to you. So there's 16 different color families with the Stampin' Up! markers, and they come three markers per pack, so you will always get a light, a medium, and dark, and they're all going to blend very nicely together. There's a six pack of uh, skin tone markers as well, and a colorless blender. So it's $15.95 for three markers. Okay, so tips. I'm not really going to go over some of the color families that I'm using because I have a tendency to mix stuff up all the time so it's hard to keep track on video. So I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks of what I found with um, using the alcohol markers. So for blendabilities, blendabilities especially, what you need to do is have a piece of paper underneath your, your work, not a craft mat. I find that the markers are fairly juicy so it will soak through the back of your paper, but it'll also, if it's if you're working over a craft mat, you'll find that the ink doesn't have anywhere to go, so it will cause bleeding. So first and foremost, make sure that you have an absorbent, you know, piece of paper underneath. Um, so I, you can see here that I've got the caps left off my markers, and they tell you to, when you purchase them, that you have to cap it tightly. So when I'm working with them for a quick change, I prefer having the marker lids off so that it's just very easy for me to switch from dark to medium light and I can do the blending and go back and forth. And I, I leave them out and as soon as I'm finished with them, of course, I'm going to cap them. So mentioning capping the marker, you'll notice that I leave the pen on a flat surface and I put the cap 
on by sort of sliding it. There's a little hole on the inside of the cap and it is possible to jam, if you're not careful, to, to jam that point into the lid. And the unfortunate part about this is that the tips are not replaceable. So you do have to sort of have really good aim. The thing with these markers is they do, they do cap very tightly. So you need a little bit of elbow grease to pull them apart and put them back on again. So you just don't want to avoid any damage. They're $15.95 and when you can't just go and replace one, you have to replace all three. So it's a good idea just to be cautious and careful. I just like to, every time I'm looking at this image, I just, I want to laugh. These characters are so kooky. I love them. I, th I think that's a bison. It might be a buffalo. I'm not 100% sure. I want, almost want to say it's a yak, but not not quite sure. Anyway, you're you're seeing how the um, the browns, I think I'm using some from uh, the light one from the crumb cake and then maybe the skin tone colors, the browns. I just find, well, I wanted some definition and I definitely wanted to um, you know have a some decent shadowing on the little bison guy okay so you can see that I have a little drawing on my piece of paper it says light source and it's like pretend sunshine so this helps me to know where to place the shadows sometimes when you're doing a flower or something it's going to be very organic and you're going to know exactly where the shadows and the, the will start and finish Sometimes on a, a critters like these, it's a little bit harder, so you have to sort of create your own. So by putting that light source up top, I'm able to um, notice what side the sunshine is actually going to be hitting them. So obviously on the right hand side of the little llama here, he's going to be the lightest, but on the left hand side of him, he's going to have some shadow because the sun is not hitting there. And oh my goodness, look at the llama's face. I went online and looked, and a lot of llamas like that, they have that face. I'm just saying the artist was pretty good at capturing <laughs> this little creature. I just want to laugh. I was so excited when I got this uh, stamp set. <clears throat> okay, so the blendability markers, they do more than just coloring. Uh, well, not really, but they color other things other than paper, let's say. They're a permanent marker. So if you wanted to, say, color your rhinestones or your embellishments to a different color, you totally can. You'll see an example of this on last week's um, Wonderwork Wednesday when I actually took a star and I colored it with a, a silver star and I colored it with a pink... Um, blendability marker so and it's permanent it will stay there it will not rub off the which is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing <laughs> because if you get on your desk you're you know you're gonna be a little upset one trick I have noticed is if you do get it on your desk you can take an alcohol wipe like a medical alcohol wipe and um, give it a scrub in it and it will um, remove so that's a good thing so the colorless blender this is the white capped marker that um, comes separately and it, they they say you know that it's a blender it's not a blender at all what it is is a highlighter and I'm using it right here on the little goats forehead and you can see it does take a while to work but you can see that it will lighten up that little spot so basically the colorless blender is like a, a bleach but it doesn't completely whiten anything oh I'm using my phone to take a look at what the uh, the, the Google suggests a goat should look like lots of them are brown I ended up going with gray with and adding a touch of warmth in them but anyway okay back to the colorless blender so it creates highlights and textures by if you're going to you know put put a wash of color on and then want to lighten it obviously it's going to give you a highlighted effect if you say dot it on say a brown teddy bear image you're going to create like a a little bit of texture a dotty texture which would kind of give you a curly fuzzy look from for a teddy bear 
um, you can do small little um, ticks and you can create a feather like effect. I used the colorless blender on the bison later on and I just wanted to create some you know woolly kind of texture it wasn't all smooth basically so it also fixes bleeds so if you go over the line you can rub the colorless blender over your whoopsie and it seems to sort of push the color back in to the unwanted color back into where it's supposed to go and it does take a while to work so I suggest you do it a little bit and then let it dry and then come back to it and let it dry and it will work. One of the nice things with the blend abilities is that you can go over an image a couple of times and you know get the coloring that you just want. Now if you're finding that it becomes a little splooshy or splotchy, mottly even, um, wait a second, let the image dry, then go back in with your um, the colors that you want and eventually you'll get the blending that you want. It does a bit of practice. This is not my first rodeo here. I have done um, some blendability um, work before. I use different kinds of alcohol markers. So I by all means am not an expert. I'm just giving you some tips and tricks that I have learned along the way. Hopefully something you might find will help you. So I'm using the new soft sky here on that little birdie and I'm finding that um, when I go to do the background, and I will do a background with this image, the little birdie was getting lost so I ended up changing colors into the new Bermuda Bay. So sometimes um, leaving a ghostly white image on like an eyeball does tend to look a little silly and you'll see that uh, I go back with um, a blue color and color over their eyes a little bit and then I wait and then I come back with my colorless blender and there's the colorless blender there getting a highlight and it does take a minute for it to lighten up and you'll see. So sometimes color families don't necessarily blend with other color families and even though, sorry for my big head in the way, even though I'm using two different color greens, I have found that, or I found that they weren't really sort of copacetic with each other, which is okay for grass. Um, it worked out really well, but you'll see I use a little trick by using a clear acrylic block that you adhere your stamps to. I just sort of scribbled on one of the colors and then I picked up my uh, another color and with the tip I just sort of picked up that color here it is right here and I just wanted to sort of give that it's like it gives an in-between tone between the two so it does have a little bit of a better blending and of course you know I wanted to create a little bit of shadow too underneath the little creatures so that's what I'm doing right here I find that if you don't give an image a shadow, it just sort of sits, it floats. It doesn't really have a proper grounding. So that's a little tip too. So this is really where you're going to see how the blend abilities, the markers do their job and what I was talking about by saturation. So here the background is being saturated. You can see some of the lines going on. I'm not necessarily caring so much. I think this is the dark one I'm using. Maybe it's medium. And then I go in with the light. So I have to go over this twice because the the color wasn't, it's all streaky. I'm not going to leave it like that, right? So I went from dark to medium to light. Now I'm still on the light. And then I'll switch to the medium. And then I'll go back with the dark. And as you see, the more saturated that paper becomes, the better it blends. And it does take a bit of time for the alcohols to, to dry. Not a ton though, so if you're doing a large area like this you want to work quickly. Or do small sections. And that's why I was doing small sections. Want that paper to be decently saturated so that those colors do blend. And now I think this is where I realized that the little birdie was, you know, the same color as the sky and I didn't necessarily want that. And one of the little tips too, if I got you know, a color on say the llama's ears, I can go over 
if I got blue color on the or the sky color on the llama's ears I could go in with the color that I used to color the llama and go over his ears again and that particular color will push that blue out so that's a little tip or trick if you go over the lines a little bit don't worry it's not the end of the world and if you find that you have got you're working on a white piece of paper and you find that you have um, gone over the lines you can always use a white gel pen to you know cover over some of the colors red it doesn't work so well but say if it was a pink or a green it, it might so here's the card pretty much today it's almost finished I hope you enjoyed this and hopefully some of these tips will actually help you a little bit with your blendability coloring. I would love the opportunity to earn your business so get in touch with me if you want to try some of these blendabilities. Until next time, I'd like to say goodbye, have a great day.